<laughs> you done? You wanna come inside now? Good boy. <laughs> Man, you're moving slow these days, bro. What's going on, boys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. If you're new to the channel, smash that subscribe. So, if you caught my last video, I gotta make sure I don't get the disaster that is my house in the background. Uh, if you caught my last video, I uh, finally got the S2000 back. And in that video, I was, oh, I, there was a part where I was assembling the seat bracket for uh, the Recaro pole position to be mounted in the S2000. Well, I got all that put together, uh, but I couldn't check my work because I didn't have the S2000 here to put the bracket in. So I didn't know if I was working on the passenger side bracket, the driver side bracket, what I was working on. So now that I have the S2000 back, what I want to do is get the pole position installed, which shouldn't be that hard, and then actually go for a first drive. So if all goes well, knock on wood, uh, I'm gonna take out the driver's seat. I know that won't be hard. Uh, and hopefully I've been working on the driver's side mount and if that's the case, then I won't have to put together the other one. And I can put the seat, uh, I can attach the seat to the brackets, and then um, I can put the whole assembly in the car, and we can go on a drive, and I can show you guys what this supercharged S2000 is like, because this thing is awesome. So, first thing I want to do is go get the, is actually take the seat out of the S2000. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so stoked for this thing. I can't wait to take you guys for a drive. Because this thing, I mean, it's not a horsepower monster. You guys know that. The S2000 is never meant to be a horsepower monster. That's not what it was born to do. But this feels like how the car was supposed to be born. The S2000 identifies with a supercharger. As a supercharger. It identifies as force induction. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's sick. All right, so should be fairly easy. I'm gonna get started taking out the driver's side seat and checking to see if the base that I've been working on uh, has actually been the driver's side base or if it's a passenger side base. Fingers crossed it's been the driver's side. All right, so driver's seat out. Again, like I said, super, super simple, but Let's see if this was the right bracket I've been working on. Please line up. Oh, yes. It is sweet. All right, so that lines up, so that's good. So now what we have to do is get the pole position mounted to the sides of the seat, or to the brackets themselves. Then once I get that mounted, then I can put it in the car and start messing with the angle that I want to sit at. <sighs> this is going to be a lot of in and out, I can tell. All right, boys, so the first thing that I'm doing, and again, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen any of my projects or anything like that, I don't know what I'm doing. This is not an instructional video. Do not take my advice. Okay. All right, every YouTuber's worst nightmare, well, not worst nightmare, but most annoying thing ever, uh, the footage I recorded right after what you just saw, for some reason, is not stored properly or unable to be played back. I don't know why, but anyway, long story short, what I ended up doing with the seatbelt was uh, just using the seatbelt extender instead. Uh, if you use the actual OEM seatbelt and then the seatbelt extender, it becomes not only too long, but it sits too close to the actual uh, center gunnel area so you can't do that so i just use a seat belt extender and then like most of the other videos show for the pci mounts the back right hole location had to be widened out just a little bit um so that was fine easy to do no, not a big deal Altogether, it looks awesome um i normally i'm against two mismatching seats but in this case you know, it's so similar to the OEM seat that I really, I don't know, I don't really have a problem with it. I think it looks fine. Um, and in case the passenger doesn't want a bucket seat, I think it actually worked out pretty well. So, next thing to do is actually go take this thing for a rip because I, I got to show you guys not only the power, but how this thing sounds. Because the Mucan exhaust, it is clear that I am losing out on some horsepower by having it. You can just even hear it. It sounds like 
there's a way too much air for the size piping that it has, the diameter piping. Uh, but I think it sounds amazing. It doesn't sound like a normal S2000. It sounds like, I'll show you. Let's get to the drive. So, again, I've gone over the exhaust being smaller a million times. You don't need to hear anything about that. Uh, the power we put down to the ground, again, was around, I want to say 340 or something like that. Um, and my goal when I was contemplating building NA, my goal was a 300 wheel horsepower car. Because, honestly, you don't need much more in an S2000. It weighs like 2,700 pounds. It's a light car. Um, anything more just becomes like silly, right? I, you can have more, I get it. But I don't know, that's just me. Just like my E36, I'm not really like trying to shoot for big horsepower numbers. And the whole purpose of this car was to try and make uh, an S2000 Type R type of experience now I get it well the new SI is turbo or the new type R is turbocharged so can't say that type R's don't go forced induction but in terms of throttle response drivability until you get above like 4500 this car drives exactly like stock it makes a few more noises than it did before which is definitely okay with me but it drives like stock. It, it really, whereas a turbocharger is like nothing, 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 like oh crap, like crazy power. This is so linear, it's unbelievable. The power delivery is just super smooth and super linear. It's like, it's like just a better NA car. I don't know if you'll be able to hear all the noises, but it's awesome. And I'm gonna wait until I, I'm gonna wait a little bit to actually romp on it. Make sure it's actually warmed up. But I mean, everything I've done to this, suspension, brakes, uh, the seat, I really, really like the way this seat feels. The driving position it puts you in is awesome. But the, the exhaust isn't that loud. Now wait till it, I hit boost. When I'm in boost, the exhaust is definitely, it's, it doesn't sound like any Honda I've had before. So just normal acceleration. You can hear the blow off. And again, the Auto Technic mounts, honestly, they're not that stiff, like at all. I, I think they're loosening up a little bit. I felt it a little bit more. It might be the seat change as well, but I, I thought I felt like they were a little bit rougher the first time I got in here. Maybe I'm just getting used to it, but I really don't feel anything with it now, like at all. I, I can tell you I have Autotechnic front engine mounts and spoon differential mounts and factory transmission mount and that combination to me feels really good. I feel like that has only improved shifting in my opinion. In my opinion that has helped shifting a lot. <laughs> I love that blow up out. I hope you can hear that. SLK 550. I know nothing about those, but I don't think it's fast at all. And I 
also, I do have, for those of you who don't know, I do have Skunk 2 Alpha header um, with straight into a test pipe with a Mugen exhaust. And then I also have, um, what else was I going to say? Skunk 2 Alpha header, Mugen exhaust. I forgot what else I was going to point out. stock as in like this is how it was supposed to be this is how it was supposed to be from the factory oh that's the other thing I was going to tell you we put VTEC down to 4200 so just cruising I mean it really feels normal like I'm cruising at 75 right now and everything feels completely normal and again like I mentioned before, we did all the ARP hardware. The Autotechnic mounts are made to help the engine rotation to really help relieve some of the stress that are on some of those bolts. All right, here we go. Here's a good one. Kraftworks has a bad reputation. I don't care. Knock on wood. I hope I don't have problems. But this thing's awesome. This thing is so sick. Oh man. Definitely worth it. 10 out of 10 worth it. If you're contemplating going supercharger, unless you want like 500 horsepower for some reason in this car, get a supercharger hands down and I could I could easily get this up to 400 wheel horsepower I don't it hooks well right now it drives amazing I don't need I mean dude for what this is the sound everything about it this thing is perfect in my opinion for me turbo car I've had was a 996 twin turbo 996 turbo and that had EVOM 670 or 675 kit and that was like a roller coaster that was like nothing that throw you back in your seat it was insane this is this feels like just a jacked up NA car <laughs> alright well that's gonna do it for this one boys I am absolutely in love with how this s2000 turned out so far um, there's not too much more i really have to do to it besides uh give it a full detail now i want to buff it i want to polish it i want to wax it i want to get the imperfections out and i need to get this lip repainted that just bothers the heck out of me so i'm going to get that repainted as well but as for mods i mean i may do some suspension bushings and stuff like that maybe some wheels definitely some tires but maybe some wheels um, but besides consumables, I mean, this thing has come a long way from the $4,000 S2000 that had a blown up F20 in it. So that's going to do it for this one, boys. Next on the agenda is underdrive pulleys in the S54 and then uh, some E92 interior goodies. So we have E92 stuff, E36 S54 stuff. 
and then I'm hopefully gonna be taking this to the track soon. So, if you guys are new to the channel, smash that subscribe button, it would mean a lot to me. I got a lot of stuff coming up, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.